people on all sides of this war are turning away from a two-state solution, including Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who in recent weeks has set out loud repeatedly what many have long suspected by outright rejecting the idea of Palestinian statehood and sovereignty. As the highest ranking Jewish elected official in our government, and as a staunch defender of Israel, I rise today to say unequivocally, this is a grave mistake for Israel, for Palestinians, for the region, and for the world. The only real and sustainable solution to this decades old conflict is a negotiated two-state solution, a demilitarized Palestinian state living side by side with Israel in equal measures of peace, security, prosperity, dignity, and mutual recognition. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. If Israel were to not only maintain the status quo, but to go beyond that and tighten its control over Gaza and the West Bank, as some in the current Netanyahu administration have suggested, in effect creating a de facto single state, then what reasonable expectation can we have that Hamas and their allies will lay down their arms? It would mean constant war. On top of that, Israel moving closer to a single state entirely under its control would further rupture its relationship with the rest of the world, including the United States. Support for Israel has declined worldwide in the last few months, and this trend will only get worse if the Israeli government continues to follow its current path. The fourth major obstacle to peace is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has all too frequently bowed to the demands of extremists like Ministers Smotrich and Ben Gavir and the settlers in the West Bank. I have known Prime Minister Netanyahu for a very long time. While we have vehemently disagreed on many occasions, I will always respect his extraordinary bravery for Israel on the battlefield as a younger man. I believe in his heart he has his highest priority is, as is the security of Israel. However, I also believe Prime Minister Netanyahu has lost his way by allowing his political survival to take the precedence over the best interests of Israel. He has put himself in coalition with far-right ex far -right extremists like Minister Smotrich and Ben Gavir, and as a result, he has been too willing to tolerate the civilian toll in Gaza, which is pushing support for Israel worldwide to historic lows. Israel cannot survive if it becomes a pariah. Prime Minister Netanyahu has also weakened Israel's political and moral fabric through his attempts to co-opt the judiciary. And he has shown zero interest in doing the courageous and visionary work required to pave the way for peace even before this present conflict. As a lifelong supporter of Israel, it has become clear to me the Netanyahu coalition no longer fits the needs of Israel after October 7th. The world has changed radically since then, and the Israeli people are being stifled right now by a governing vision that is stuck in the past. Nobody expects Prime Minister Netanyahu to do the things that must be done to break the cycle of violence, to preserve Israel's credibility on the world stage, and to work towards a two-state solution. If he were to disavow ministers Smotrich and Ben Gavir and kick them out of his, government co his governing coalition, that would be a real meaningful step forward. But regrettably, there's no reason to believe Prime Minister Netanyahu would do that. He won't disavow ministers Smotrich and Ben Gavir in their calls for Israelis to drive Palestinians out of Gaza and the West Bank. He won't commit to a military operation in Rafah that prioritizes protecting civilian life. He won't engage responsibly in discussions about a day after plan for Gaza and a long-term and a longer-term pathway to peace. Once Hamas is deprived of power, the Palestinians will be much freer to choose a government they want and deserve. With the prospect of a real two-state solution on the table and for the first time genuine statehood for the Palestinian people, I believe they will be far more likely to support more mainstream leaders committed to peace. 
I think the same is true for the Israeli people. Call me an optimist, but I believe that if the Israeli public is presented with a path to a two-state solution that offers a chance at lasting peace and coexistence, then most mainstream Israelis will moderate their views and support it. Part of that moderation must include rejecting right-wing zealots like ministers Smotrich and Ben Gavir and the extremist Israeli settlers in the West Bank. These people do not represent a majority of the Israeli public, yet under Prime Minister Netanyahu's watch, they have had far too much influence. All sides must reject from river to the sea thinking, and I believe they will if the prospects for peace and a two-state solution are real. Israel has the right to choose its own leaders, and we should let the chips fall where they may. But the important thing is that Israelis are given a choice. There needs to be a fresh debate about the future of Israel after October 7th. In my opinion, that is best accomplished by holding an election. Now, if President Net Prime Minister Netanyahu's current coalition remains in power after the war begins to wind down and continues to pursue dangerous and inflammatory policies that test existing U.S. standards for assistance, then the United States will have no choice but to play a more active role in shaping Israeli policy by using our leverage to change the present course. The United States' bond with Israel is unbreakable. But if extremists continue to unduly influence Israeli policy, then the administration should use the tools at its disposal to make sure our support for Israel is aligned with our broader goal of achieving long-term peace and stability in the region. I have always said that when horrific things happen, some turn, some turn inwards and let their grief consume them, while others light a candle and turn their grief into power. They are able to see hope in the darkness. In scripture, we read about how God created the world from an infinite void, that out of the greatest darkness can come the greatest light. I hope and pray that from the brutal slaying of Israelis by Hamas and the harrowing civilian toll in Gaza, that a two-state solution where Jews and Palestinians can live in peace will prevail. I know I'm not alone in this prayer, there are right now Palestinians in Gaza, some of whom are still pulling dead family members from the rubble, who are defying Hamas in their murderous ideology and calling for a pathway to peace. There are right now some families of the victims of October 7th in Israel who have been calling for peace, asking their government to transcend the cycle of bloodshed and revenge. If they can find in their hearts pass to peace, peace, then surely we can also. From the ashes, may we light the candles that lead to a better future.